Good morning, everybody. Um, it's very nice to be back here after a few years' gap. Um, it's nice to call myself CEO. You probably will have already worked out that I work for myself. Um, but um, very nice to see some, some old familiar faces and also some, some new faces who hopefully are taking on the, the mantle of this, uh, this fascinating part of the chemical industry that we all, uh, I think, love. So um, you may have heard of Arizona Chemical, uh, so I'm not going to talk too much about my, my background there, but maybe just to talk a little bit about Beardo Adams, where I've spent um, the last three years until the end of last year. So Beardo Adams is about a $120, $130 million adhesive company, um, independently owned, family owned company. Um, so they are, I, was, I would suppose that they're in a market challenger sort of position relative to the Henkels and Fullers and uh, Bostics of the world. Um, but nevertheless, they have a very innovative product line and they are involved in every region of the world. They produce in the US, they produce in the UK, uh, in Germany, uh, in Spain, in um, Sweden. Uh, but also, uh, they sell a lot around the world, I think to 80 different countries. So. What I'm hoping to do with this presentation today is to um, give you an insight into the downstream um, prospects, if you like, for Rosin Esther. And uh, I want to thank Alex for the opportunity to do this presentation and, and to thank, of course, the, the wider PCA, but also to, to thank Vitali for his earlier presentation because I think it, the information that he gave you in that uh, underpins a lot of, of what I'm talking about and what I'm going to talk about. However, I also would like to say that um, I think the expression is the rumours of the death of Rosinesta may be slightly exaggerated. So I'm hoping to present maybe a slightly more optimistic view of Rosinesta, which is down to various factors in the adhesives industry. The research I've done over the past few months and years is based mostly on information I have about Europe. So for that, I do apologize to those of you in the US and Asia. I won't be presenting numbers on that, but I, I will comment later on the various trends um, in those regions. And also want to tell you that this version of the presentation is different to the one you have in your books. So you need to pay attention. Um, so I'm going to give you some, some numbers at the beginning. Um, all the numbers that I, I have have been more or less verified with the people who produce information for FICA, the European Adhesives Association. Um, so the, the European market size of adhesives for hot melt adhesives, I'm only going to talk about hot melts. I'm not going to talk about rosin use in water-based or any other areas. I'm only talking about hot melts. The current European market size is estimated at around 650,000 tonnes, growing in all segments at about 3.5% per year. The tachyfier market within that is estimated to be around 250,000 tonnes, which is 38% of total adhesive. Within that, currently, the research that I've done indicates that rosin esters are about 90,000 tonnes, which is 14% of total adhesive and 36% of the tachyfier portion. And just to kind of maybe, to begin with, confirm a little bit what Vitali was saying, my research indicates that rosin ester usage in adhesives, in hot melt adhesives, has declined by about 1% per year on average over the last five to 10 years, despite the overall adhesive market growth. But the picture, of course, is never simple. You have to dig behind the headlines to understand what's happening in different market segments. And I think one of the fascinating parts about playing in the adhesives industry is the diversity of applications and segments. It also creates a lot of problems for companies when they try to define exactly what their business is, which segments they're playing in. So uh, people talk about PSA, but of course PSA is an application segment rather than a market segment. Uh, so they get 
companies and people get confused about, in a way, about what they're talking about. But the rosin ester usage varies by adhesive market segment and geography, and I'll come on to talk about that. Before we do that, though, let's, let's talk about some general um, trends in, um, in adhesives, in hot melt adhesives. And some of these have been mentioned already this morning by some of the presenters. Um, so one is the demand for lower application temperatures to save energy and to improve handling safety. This is not a new trend. This has been around for 20, 25 years. So the developments that correspond to that are lower viscosity, lower softening points, adhesives with equivalent or better properties. The thing is, this is, to be honest, this is a kind of um, false in my opinion, and I think in the opinion of many adhesives companies, this is sort of a, a, a false objective in a way, because lower temperatures don't really help with, with health and safety. I mean, you're, not talking, you're still talking about temperatures of 120, 130, 140, which are still going to give you a really nasty burn. I mean, if you get hot melt on your hands, you're not going to say, oh, thank goodness it was only 130 degrees instead of 160. It's still going to hurt like hell. Um, so that's a, a wrong kind of thinking in, in the view of adhesive companies. But of course, they chase it because it's a kind of market trend. If you look at the overall energy usage you save with, low, with cool melts, you don't really save a lot of energy either. Um, so it's one of these trends that, to a certain extent, satisfies the marketing people, maybe the, uh, the um, marketing communications people, but doesn't really make sense in a way. You've then got the, the trend that, you know, most, most of the time, people who are using adhesives, they don't want to use adhesives. Most of the big adhesives users, the big fast-moving consumer goods companies, they really don't want to use adhesives. They want to make their product. Adhesives are a necessary evil. And when you have downtime due to equipment breakages and those kind of things, and you have to clean down the line, this gets them very frustrated. So a trend that's happened over the last, again, 15, 20 years is much more clean running, uh, highly thermally stable products that don't char or break down. You also have a trend in the industry which kind of counteracts, in a way, that, that trend, that the brand owners want to have lower cost, uh, materials, lower cost board, more recycled content, and they want to have smaller reserves. That's the bit that you bond to with the adhesive. So that leads to less adhesive. So then you need better products with excellent specific adhesion to low energy substrates at low usage rates. So that, again, dr another driver in the market that's driving across many different segments. Of course, there's been a big trend, and we've heard already um, from, from two of the big guys about sustainability and green. And as rosin ester manufacturers, those of you, you who are, you'll know that you've, you've pushed the whole renewable recyclable thing. But overall, for hot melt adhesives, that problem isn't solved yet. It's not a case that uh, rosin esters, or, or the system rather, for adhesives are totally based on 100% recyclable or renewable content. In fact, having hot melt adhesives anywhere uh, makes it more difficult to recycle stuff, as we know. And as I said earlier, a big trend is people don't want to get involved with adhesives. They want to avoid having to think about adhesives. So there's a big trend towards turnkey solutions based on cost in use and partnerships with equipment manufacturers. This is not just the Nordsons and Robotex of the world, but the complete line manufacturers who, who manufacture the, uh, the packaging lines. But you'll see that a lot of these trends really relate to, by implication, they relate to the packaging market. And packaging is only part of the whole story, which I'll, I'll come on to. So, Just going on to um, general trends affecting rosin ester usage in hot melt adhesives. Uh, 
what you have for rosin ester is superior adhesion in many applications. Vitaly has already explained that. Um, you have a good hedge against hydrocarbon pricing and availability swings. They're seen as a renewable alternative to hydrocarbon tachyfiers. And, um, but you still need hydrocarbon for the polymer, so not really a green adhesive, as I've said. And surprisingly, the odor of rosin ester is sometimes favored over hydrocarbons. Now, the negative side is that the growth in metallocene catalyzed polypropylene and polyethylene polymers has basically led to this decline in rosin ester usage. Because as Vitali showed, when you start to use those very nonpolar polymers, they are not compatible or they're, li they're very limited compatibility with rosin esters. And as Vitali said, a little bit of incat incompatibility goes a long way. Now, the history of metallocene, many of you will be aware, was driven by the market leaders, Henkel and H.B. Fuller, 15, 20 years ago, who were given early access to the technology. The first metallocene products had very low, very poor adhesion. I can remember visiting one of my customers in around 2004, 2005, and I asked him about metallocene, and he said it's beautifully white and clean and clear and, and clean running, but it doesn't bloody stick. And that's kind of important when it comes to an adhesive, right? So um, now later generations of metallocenes have improved on that. Um, and what you have with metallocene, it fulfills a lot of those trends that I, that I was talking about. It's, it's much more stable, much cleaner running. And it also allows mileage savings, much lower usage uh, of, of the adhesive um, in the form uh, of the adhesive on the line. And we've all heard, you know, the, the, the bad stories about rosin esters. We've all had customers who've said to us that rosin esters are dirty, they're old technology, uh, smelly, poor stability. Um, the interesting thing is, when, when metallocene came along, um, the big guys, Henkel and H.B. Fuller, didn't really focus on making a white, EVA product, a clear EVA product. They focused on the new technology that they, they'd got access to. Whereas a lot of the other independents, including Beardo Adams, because they didn't have the metallocene, couldn't make it work, they focused on making a better EVA product. And there were some really good, really clean running EVA adhesives out there. So it's still a matter for the brand owners and the uh, equipment manufacturers or the, the uh, assembly companies, for example, woodworking companies, to make choices. It's not a done deal that you have to use metallocene, that everything is moving towards metallocene. That isn't the case. On the other hand, standard hydrocarbon tachyfiers have also improved. So you could look at it that rosin esters, in a way, are getting squeezed from the bottom by better standard hydrocarbons and squeezed from the top uh, by metallocene, which are usually um, tachyfied with hydrogenated hydrocarbons. But because assembly is a whole load of other applications and subsegments, the focus when, we, when people talk about hot melt adhesives tends to be the packaging industry. Um, and this is why I think that there's a general feeling that um, because metallocene has made big inroads into that industry, there's a feeling that rosin ester is really dying. But I'm going to talk about some of the other segments as well. So we, we, we did this one. So what you have then, you know, if you go back to this and you see what's happened with rosin esters, this is then the 90,000 tons that I talked about earlier on, divided up this time by the segments so, that, so the previous pie chart was the adhesive split, and this is now the rosin ester split in Europe by market segment. So again, you can see rigid packaging is the biggest part, but there's still a lot of other stuff there. And I'm going to talk about those, um, those areas. Now, rigid packaging is, is a, as I said, a massive area, many different applications. It's, it's mostly food and non-food, fast-moving consumer goods manufacturers who want to package up their product. Um, now, 
there's some positives for Ros and Esther's in this segment as well, because there's a lack of focus, really, a resistance to change, especially for small users. If you have a, an adhesive which works, even if there's better technology out there, if it's more expensive, why would you change? If you maintain your equipment well and everything runs well, why would you change? Um, People now want to have good housekeeping. For the, for the things we've talked about this morning, even if the, product, if the product that you are using today has a tendency to char and burn, you can fix that by just improving your maintenance schedule, which from a health and safety perspective you should be doing anyway. And the other thing I want to say is that, particularly with the larger companies, there's a real focus on requests for quotations. They send out these massive... RFQs, so the, 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 the global users like AB InBev and Mondelez and Coca-Cola, global RFQs on adhesives. And of course, it's very difficult to know because you're not talking to anyone, you're not negotiating, how you, how you should pitch for those, how you should work on those. But nor, more often than not, companies don't want to put all of their best high price products into those RFQs because they won't get through the first cut. So they often put you know, the kind of fighting grades or the, 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 the slightly less new grades in there so that they can get to the second round and get to the discussion. I want to tell you as well, it's a very depressing thing to do RFQs for these companies because what happens at these major brand owners is, adhesives are part usually of the MRO, the maintenance, repair, and overhaul um, part of their business. So they don't get a lot of focus. And usually, they get an intern, someone who's two or three years out of college, mid-twenties, to manage the adhesive, the global adhesive procurement project. And they send out the RF, you know, they, they find out which adhesives they're using, they say we're using 75 adhesives across the world. We want to get it down to four. Everyone puts their stuff in. It all pops out, second round. And then the intern has since moved on. So there's a new person. The whole thing starts again. So no, there's a hell of a lot of inertia in this market to change. Um, and therefore, and also the the cost of the adhesive on the package is tiny compared to the actual value of the product. So why would they spend a lot of time and money in converting what's a, a fairly small number maybe to a, to a slightly higher number with better performance when they've got more important stuff to do? As I said, they hate adhesives. They don't want to use adhesives. So this is why in the rigid packaging area, there's a heck of a lot of inertia, People don't change stuff that often, which is good news for Ros and Esther manufacturers. Um, there's also, as I said earlier on, the, the trend towards increased recycled content that provides new adhesive challenges. Also, brand owners want to have new designs every six months, 12 months. They want to have these nice, metallized, beautiful packs that fly off the shelves, you know, that catch your eye when you're walking in the supermarket. And those are difficult to bond to. And they won't necessarily be met by standard metallocene type adhesives. You need to have some specific adhesion uh, for, for some of these applications. So there's some good news for us and Esther here. There's also some negatives because, as I said, metallocenes have grown fastest in this segment. Um, they do enable you to focus less on the adhesive. It's more a fit and forget type of um, opportunity. It, it can enable faster line speeds, and you can use less. You can use less, but you pay more per kilo. But overall, there's supposed to be a total cost benefit. The problem with that total cost benefit is it works fine during the trials, but as soon as you go away and you start to get into regular production, what do operators do on packaging lines? they dial up the adhesive usage because they want the stuff to stick. I don't care what my manager says. I don't care what the purchasing guy said or what the 
the value engineering people said, they've, they're long gone. They dial up, the, they dial up the, um, the usage, and so all the savings that you thought you were going to get, you don't necessarily get, but you're still paying more per kilo. Where I think metallocene has been very effective is with the larger companies when particularly the, the big adhesive companies like Henkel and HB Fuller have been able to convince them on an enterprise level to move across, particularly where there are um, uh, turnkey projects, really, where, where, you could, where they're getting new equipment lines in and the adhesive is part of a whole solution for a new range of products. And that's where metallocene has grown very well. But of course, at the same time, if you have a very clean running adhesive, it's very difficult then to sell spares. You, you don't sell so many nozzles and hoses. And guys like Nordson and Robotech, they also like to sell spares. So there's a bit of a balance there too. But this is the segment really where metallocenes have, have, have penetrated most. I just, I just wanted to show, this is a slide I added, just to show you the kind of, a little bit of the complexity. This is just what? eight or nine of the top um, FMCG brand owners globally and the number of brands that they own. So you can imagine the goal of getting down from 75 adhesives, and I have seen that on an RFQ. I have seen companies who use globally 75 different hot melts worldwide getting it down to four or one or none. That's the kind of targets they set themselves, which in my opinion are completely unachievable. I'm all in favor of tough targets, but it's very difficult. So, so much for, for rigid packaging. I want to talk about assembly. This is a very diverse um, area, a very diverse number of segments. It includes transportation, although not automotive. It includes filter, construction, mattress and spring, so pocket springs and bed assembly, appliances, that means dishwashers, washing machines, carpeting and textiles, cord strapping. Um, and here, you know, adhesives are specified into parts, often for many years. And unlike in packaging, the producers here, they don't hate adhesives. They see adhesives as being an integral part of their product. They're adding value. So they take time and they take care to choose a good adhesive there is a focus on cost because the adhesive is a high proportion of the part cost and the benefits that you can get from metallocene with a high line running are not so obvious. They're not so great here. So um, generally filter manufacturers will keep their light, for example, will keep their factories very clean. They need to run all the time. And so they're not going to have a problem with char or, or breakdown. Now on the other side, if you want to have a very water white or white adhesive that stays color stable for a very long time, you're probably going to want to choose a metallocene type product. As I said earlier, just before we had the breakdown, I was going to say, you know, rosin ester EVA systems, there are white uh, systems out there. There are clear EVAs. There are good color stability EVA rosin ester systems out there if you look for them. Talk a little, about, little bit about woodworking. Um, there are many filled products in this segment, and of course the color is less important here. Um, it's a traditional segment of high rosin ester usage. Rosin ester here addresses specific adhesion challenges. There's a focus on cost, very similar to assembly really. Um, so the only area I would say, there's a, there's a trend towards some polyolefin products in, in the high end of woodworking that rival the environmental resistance of PUR, because PUR is used a lot in woodworking as well. But for standard edge banding and profile wrapping, rosin esters are used a lot, and I think will be for many, many years to come. Vitaly already talked a lot about PCA, uh, PCA, PSA, and um, this is an area where um, it's, it's an application segment rather than uh, a market segment, it's application defined. The positives for rosin ester in this area is that there are more, these are more complex systems. Tachify choice 
is driven by the polymers and the rubbers used, not for some kind of cost saving uh, or overall cost saving or, or clean running reasons. Um, in here, the rosin ester addresses specific adhesion and conversion challenges. And the value of the adhesive here, more than anywhere, is part of the customer's value. It's inherently part of the customer's salon value. Now, there's a tendency to lower coat weights on labels, for example, which actually is driving an increase in tachyfier content. Not only rosin esters, but also all other tachyfiers in PSAs. And PSAs are a fairly high growth segment globally. Just talk, just mention briefly labeling. So this is direct hot melt labeling. This is a kind of slow, a low growth segment. Um, and there's really no motivation for change here. Uh, there are metallocene formulations available for this segment, but it tends to be the case that companies are still using the traditional products that they've always used. And then talking about automotive, which is another area of big expansion for adhesives, not only our kind of hot melts, but all, all types of adhesives, polyurethanes as well, for non-structural secondary bonding. Again, the rosin esters here, very similar to the assembly segment, they address specific adhesion challenges. They're specified into parts, often for many years, so that leads to few changes. You don't want to approve a new product if you can avoid it. So it tends to only be the case that when there's a new uh, part on a car that needs to have a new adhesive, that things would change. So where do I see rosin esters in 10 years' time in this in hot melt adhesive. You remember the number before, I hope, 90,000 tons. So if we, if we juggle everything, and, and you know, forecasting is always difficult, especially about the future. Um, but when you look at what I think will happen over the next uh, 10 years with the growth of various segments, I think rosin esters in Europe will grow again to around 97,000 tons. Now, of course, that's within the limits of experimental error. I've talked to the guys who do the work for FICA and got some different opinions, uh, or similar opinions, rather. Um, so I think that you know, there has been a decline, certainly, particularly in packaging. The decline will continue to a certain extent. But when you look at all the segments together, there are still projected growth for rosin esters because of the growth of adhesives. And we also know, as, as Vitaly again mentioned earlier on, in terms of the availability of resin formers, it's not so easy on the hydrocarbon side either. So if you take the whole picture, I think there's still a, 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 good, a fairly good prognosis. Now I want to talk a bit, as I said I would, about uh, the regional variations here. Um, all of the data that I presented, all of the work that I've done has really been focused on Europe, but I've talked to also people in North America and in Asia to try to get an idea of, do they see the same trends? Um, in Europe, regionally, market uptake of metallocenes has been higher in Western and Northern Europe than in Southern and Eastern Europe. Um, I think you're driven by maybe Henkel and Fuller's presence in Northern Europe, particularly in Germany, of course, is a very, uh, a very technologically advanced area, and, and uh, they've been able to persuade companies about the total cost ownership of adhesives. And there have been lots of partnerships with equipment companies to sell solutions rather than, uh, rather than just products. But, you know, there's loads of adhesive companies in southern Europe, um, in Italy, Spain, Portugal, and, and to a certain extent in France as well, We've got long-standing customer and supplier relationships, and I think there's more market inertia there. So we haven't seen as much growth in metallocene in Southern Europe as in Northern Europe. Interestingly as well, several people I spoke to about North America have said that it's been much slower than in Europe. Customers are more adhesive price driven, so when they see the actual price of the adhesive, they go for something that's uh, a lower price or mid-price rather than the, the, the higher price of a metallocene. And also there's been more focus for longer on 
hands on the machine. There's more focus on equipment maintenance, which means you don't necessarily need to have a clean running adhesive. In South America, market uptake of metallocene also seems rather low, perhaps due to the traditional presence of, and use of, high, uh, of, of gum rosin esters, uh, but it seems again to have a similar profile to, to southern Europe. And Asia is complex. <laughs> um, there has been appreciable adoption of metallocene for new applications, and with particularly with global users, but Operator education is not always sufficient to benefit from material savings. So again, that's what I'm saying about you do the trials, everything looks good. Yes, you can save money in terms of breakdowns and in terms of adhesive usage. But when you start to run, the operators change the parameters. They, change, they dial up the adhesive usage. So you don't get the savings that you, that you hoped for. And equipment maintenance in, in Asia is particularly low cost, and it usually comes as part of a service package with the equipment. So again, EVA and rosin esters still maintain a healthy share, also due to low manufacture, to local manufacture. So just to conclude then, it's clear that metallocene techno te new technologies such as metallocene have taken and will continue to take a share from traditional hot melts, such as those that use rosin esters. But that's a very, oh, very big oversimplification. It's particularly true in the largest segment, which is rigid packaging, but in other segments, the arguments for metallocene technology are not so compelling. So it is expected that we'll get to an equilibrium, and rosin ester, I think, will remain a significant tachyfier technology due to its adhesion performance, specific polymer compatibilities and its renewable nature. So, Wells and Esters do have a future in, in hot melt adhesives. Thanks very much. <laughs>